Hello everybody and welcome to session 10 of Perus Material 101 via MATLAB. In today's session we're gonna talk more about visualization of the network of connections inside the Perus Material. So if you have followed these uh, trainings, we have initially talked about how to generate some geometries and then we have tried to segment them and find out the pore size distribution and also we have analyzed the connectivity inside these structures and in today's session we wanted to visualize those connections in three dimensions so uh, let's start by cleaning the memory and also creating a geometry using the functions we have developed in the previous sessions here we are using obvious spheres which creates an array consisted of overlapping spheres and then we assume an spatial resolution as we have talked before here we are assuming that each of the voxels is representing five microns in the real world and then uh, using another previously developed functions known as segment we're gonna to using watershed segmentation algorithm to break down the array of A and then put it back into B and if you have followed the previous session we have talked about how to find the connections between different pores and actually doing a connectivity analysis and here we have converted the main file of the previous session into a single function known as netcon for network and connections and we can use it like this so network and connections would be equal to netcon of b over array b which b is actually a segmented array so if we simply run this part of the code uh, you can see we would have a network array which shows which of the pores is connected to what other pores for example here it means um, this one it means pore 6 and 2 are connected and also we have this connections array which shows the same information but in a different shape it works like this so for example this line it means Port 2 and port 6 they are connected, port 2 and port 8 are connected and if we go through the whole list the number of rows inside this list which is 474 it, act it actually shows how many connections or how many links we have inside this network it's very important if we wanted to visualize it so here we are using netcon as I said and then we can also calculate the coordination number as we were doing in the previous sessions by calculating the summations of this network array in a specific direction it doesn't matter because it's a symmetric array so and then we can also visualize it using spy function as we have talked in the previous session to see how is the connectivity inside the matrix so um, after that we're gonna to do a recap on how to find the pore size distribution by using region props function which is a built-in functions inside MATLAB as you can see we just use the um, segmented output here which is called B and we just fit it into region props and it gives back us a structure which here we are calling reg and it's got different fields and here uh, for example we can use this field area to find out how much is the volume of each of these distinguished pores and also there is another property inside this reg structure uh, which shows the centroid of this um, of each of the pores so if you run this file this is the connectivity matrix and here if you look at this reg structure here it's struct as you can see here 
so it's got different fields and here we have area which actually is equal to the volume or the number of voxels inside um, each of the pores and here this is the centroid so it's, it's three different numbers which represents the x y and z location of the um, center of mass of that specific pore so uh, here we are calculating the centers using region props and we are putting it inside this array so we have an array called centers and it contains x y and z elements of the centroid of the pores and then um, we, we've got the equivalent radius and then we are calling this equivalent radius as a property of this different pores because if we wanted to visualize these pores we need to have some properties to color the pores based on that property and here we're gonna use equivalent radius is up to you that which property of a pore you wanted to visualize so I have developed a function known as um, netviz here for visualizing a network I'm not going to go through details of this function because it would be a bit confusing but it's basically just plotting lines and putting some dots inside a 3d space nothing more than that you don't need to um, have any concern about it so we're just going to use this netviz function which takes connections which we have here from netcon and also takes centers which we have calculated here and then it's got a property which is for example here is the equivalent radius of the pores we're just gonna use this property to assign a color into different pores inside um, inside the network so if we run the whole part of this code this would be the outcome so this is the internal network of our geometry as you can see these dots they are pores uh, or nodes and we have some links that represents throats pore throats or actually some links inside this network we have x y and z directions and here this property these are the values so it means that for example these blue dots they are very pretty much very small things probably they are maybe one pixel or something and then we have also some of these pores which are actually much larger as you can see here there for example the radius is 61 which means that they are pretty much large pores okay so we can also combine this code with the volume showing code which we have developed in the past but we don't wanted this volume function to open a new figure and we wanted to plot them on top of each other in order to do that I have simply created this vol2 function which is simple it's, it's very similar to this vol but it just doesn't open a new figure so if uh, I visualize this network again and this time I use vol2 to show also the volume of the geometry and then I'm going to make it a little bit transparent to make it more visible so if I, if I run this part of the code this would be the outcome as you can see we have the original geometry here as green and then inside the pore spaces we have our pores and nodes which are our pores which are nodes and then they're connected through these links into each other as you can see here for example here and here they're connected to each other and um, also as you can see they are located almost at the center of the openings inside the geometry thank you very much everybody for watching this session i hope it has been useful for you thank you very much and see you in the next session